name is Moses Nyandusi. I am uh, one of the instructors at the East Africa School of Aviation. My profession, my training, and everything that I do around this school is about air cargo management and shipping practice. So today I want to say something about the course. I know it will benefit people in and out of the school, in and out of the country, and all over the world. This training, I've been doing it for the past 15 years or so. And during my journey of training and profession, I have managed to educate, train, equip, and uh, empower uh, hundreds of students who are now uh, currently in the field. Most of them work with international airlines, uh, the shipping companies, agents, regulated agents, ground handling companies. And what we teach here is about uh, shipping of goods from point A to point B. That is from the airport of origin to the airport of destination. Our main aim and concern is that the goods leave the airport of departure and get to the country of destination in the same condition as it was given to us by the shipper. What we need in this kind of training or in this profession, number one, we need disciplined people, people who know that they have been given a responsibility to work, to prepare, to pack, mark, label, and handle goods in a way that they will get to the destination in the safest way, uh, in a secure most way. And you don't have to be told by anybody, like you don't need a policeman to come and tell you what you need to do in the industry. Here, we listen, we obey we to our manuals. They are our guiding uh, uh, radar. They are the ones that help us what to do. So if you've been given an instruction by a manual somewhere to follow in, the, in terms of packing, in terms of quantity, in terms of uh, quality of packagings and all that, what you need to do is obey that. Like, for example, if you've been told to carry five kgs in a package, you can't exceed. Nobody has to come and tell you this quantity has been exceeded. You just know about it. At the same time, um, you also need to know that your personal endeavor, how do you push yourself to the limit? Sometimes at our airports, there's a lot of pressure to work. You need to, like, put yourself in the shoes of the customer who needs his goods to arrive at the destination in good time. In this profession, we don't work for money. Money works for us. That is to say, it makes things move. Most of the young people nowadays come into the field looking to be paid a lot of money to be rich and all that. But what there is is that if you work right, if you do things in the right way, it's going to be a time when you'll be rewarded for that kind of work. I have been in this school for a number of years and I've seen people come, grow, get the knowledge, get the skills, and they go to the field and apply them. Now, what there is is that there are certain things in your personal life that you will have to sacrifice for the betterment of your career. Like, there's not going to be much comfort because of our nature of the nature of our work is... Most of the time, when other people are relaxing, they are on holiday, uh, the, that's when the business is, uh, requires your attention. At the same time, uh, we, this, there, we work on shifts. Uh, there's going to be a time when you want to sleep, but you have to be at work. There's going to be a time when you want to go clubbing, but you have to be at work. So young people need to understand that once you've chosen such a profession that is highly demanding, it is not cargo alone. Even in the rest of the aviation industry, we have uh, the, the passenger handling uh, portfolios, we have uh, the security area, the safety measures and all that. It all requires you to be alert because there's going to be a situation that requires you to see it, you, we always work ahead of situations. We are always prepared for any eventualities. We don't get caught unawares. You can't be caught unawares. Like 
there is not going to be a time when you are not ready to handle anything. So we plan in advance by referring to our manuals and obeying instructions. The supervisors will always be there. We'll always look, go for two things. One, safety. And the second one is security. We want the goods to go to the air side when uh, we are absolutely sure that they do not contain anything that is forbidden or restricted. At the same time, we do not want to endanger the lives of those who are going to work in the aircraft. We don't want to endanger the airport on the ground. We don't want to endanger the aircraft when it's airborne. So we have to make sure that the goods that we have packed, the quantities that we've packed, the, uh, the, the, the nature of the goods that we are carrying, they do not have anything that's going to put our aircraft in danger. So we try as much as possible to avoid accidents and incidents. And at the same time, we also avoid anything uh, that can cause an act of unlawful interference uh, uh, in our airports. So that's what we do here. So when one wants to come to the school to get a lot of knowledge about shipping and any other course that involves air cargo management, you need to have, number one, before we even look at your uh, high school qualifications and uh, course prerequisites, number one, you must have the right attitude. Most of the time, people don't have the right attitude to be trained. They feel they know a lot. They feel uh, they can't be corrected. But if this is the field where you get corrected where all the time, and it's not once. Number two, then you must have uh, the, 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 the right qualifications from high school to join our school and then sit down, get trained. We do both practical. Our trainings are most of the time competence-based. Competence-based means you come here, the training is mostly student-centered and not instructor-centered as uh, it has always been the case. Uh, Student-centered means uh, that um, it is more of students participating in the training and not the instructor just standing there and giving lectures to students. So at the end of the training, the module, uh, the unit, and course objectives have to be met when the participation of the student has been uh, involved fully. So the student leaves the school with uh, uh, four things. One, he leaves with what we call knowledge. Two, the skills. Three, he gets the experience. And then four, the attitude. So the attitude that you came in with may have not been enough to work in the field of aviation in general, because even if you are not really dealing with the shipping of cargo by air, you will find yourself in an, in an aviation facility. You'll be in an airport, you'll be in a seaport, you'll be anywhere where the regulations are. All of us know that airports are highly regulated. That means uh, screening of personnel Passengers and cargo is a mandatory thing. So we, we make sure that you obey regulations as they are because nobody's going to be there to explain to you why ABCD practices are being uh, done at this particular airport. So you obey. And then once that happens, you get that attitude of like, I am here to make it happen, to, to make it work. And then number two, you contribute towards the safety and security of an airport by just doing that which is right. Of incidents in and outside of a country where people have compromised their integrity, they have compromised the safety, they overload an aircraft either intentionally or accidentally, and it ends up causing all those accidents and incidents that have managed have happened and people have lost their lives and many things like that. So ours, we are preparing a workforce that's going to go and improve in the standards of our uh, facilities. Number two, the practice, international handling of goods and passengers. We are changing one life at a time in the school to ensure that the staff who are going to join the airlines of the world, because our trainings are not only locally um, uh, are recognized, 
but they are internationally recognized. Our exams come from an organization known as uh, the International Air Transport Association, IATA, actually the international body for all airlines in the world. So once you pass these exams, you are assured of working for an airline because IATA also manages those airlines. But if you don't make it, then it means you are not fit to work for any airline. That's what we do here. Having been here for all these years that I've been here, I can tell you it's not an easy job to train people. But once you, you start doing it, you never realize how easy it gets to find somebody actually finishing the training. And once they finish, they join the workforce, they always come back to the school to say thank you. You gave us the knowledge, you gave us the skills, the right attitudes and experience. And now they look better than they are. I want to say, in like we normally say here at the School of Aviation, that the sky is always not the limit. It's just but a lower limit. There is more. Actually, I will add this. But like I usually say, the sky is not your limit. The limit is your vision.